Welcome back to Worth and Weekly News. Subscribe to stay informed. This week, I was sleeping in, woke up, and the dev server was open. First thing I gotta say about 1.77, it is beautiful. The new Donger engine looks amazing. The dirt, the mud, the sand looks so good. The snow especially stood out to me. It looked like snow. Next thing I'm gonna quickly jump to are the vehicles being added, including the ones we already know about. The US is getting the Jewish M60 and the Abrams M1. Germany is getting the Leopard 2K. USSR is getting the T64B. Great Britain is getting the Challenger. France is getting the MX-30 prototype and the MX-30 B2 Breens. In terms of aircraft, the US is getting their own F-84G. About time. Germany is getting the HE-177. Only one variant though. USSR is getting and the LA-200. Great Britain is getting the MB-5 and two Spitfire Mark Vs. One armed with four 20mm cannons. Japan is getting the Ki-108. Italy is getting a premium Spitfire and their first Regina plane, the RE-2000 Series 1. Unfortunately only one. There was a whole lot of those and we've been kind of waiting on those for a long time now. France is getting the Martin 167A3, a premium Yak-3, and a new jet, the MD-452 Mysterious 2C Pre-Series. Unexpectedly right under that list was the naval fleet, a list of boats and ships that will be available for testing in the future. And unfortunately, this list only had Germany and the US. Of note being added, each country is getting two destroyers for use the Fletcher and the Coel. For Germany, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that name. And the Z20. Although what I'm more excited about is that Germany is getting two flak ferries, which are, as they sound, ferries with flak cannons on them. They look awesome, trust me. No new map is patched, but they did update some of the older ones. On Poland, they added a stone ridge next to the lake to stop the spawn sniping that happens across there. In the sense of aircraft, there's a lot of things changed to the flight models, damage models, weapons, and characteristics. If I were to go through each individual one, it would be extremely boring. This video would be nine hours long. Of things that I think are important, the FADFs, the P-38 LLO, the A-36, the P PV2D, the SB2C4, the SB2C5, the SBD3 now have gun pods added to them. So when you need a bit more DACA, you got it. And the IL-28, TU-14T, and the Kika now have rocket boosters for taking off. And since for tanks, I can, once again, I cannot go through everything, but I'll point out some things that I thought were interesting. Radar-assisted spags, the spags with radar, now have lead indicators, like on arcade, to shoot at aircraft. A ready rack function has been added, apparently only for rank 5 and 6, but I swear it's working for lower rank vehicles. Essentially now what happens is your crew will load the ready rack while not loading the gun, and this will make the fire rate much faster. I've noticed in the Chiri 2, it has just overall made the fire rate a whole lot faster. Now, matchmaking in the dev server is much different than regular matchmaking. You just fight bots all day, so I can't I can't say I took it out in actual combat, but it felt like it's just gonna be a whole lot better. Though on the other hand, I feel like the French autoloaders are broken now. It seems what happens is after you fire the first magazine of shells, your loader has to load the ready rack and then load the gun. And loading the gun, it only loads one shell at a time. So it gives you this insanely long reload. In correlation with the ready rack change, it essentially makes it so your ready rack is always stocked. Ergo, you always have ammo in your turret. This could be a positive or a negative to you, mainly depending on what tanks you drive. But just keep in mind, from now on, Tiger II always has ammo in the back of its turret. On the subject of ammo, I don't know if this is written down anywhere, but while testing, I noticed that ammo seems to disintegrate more often than explode. This is possible a decision Gaijin made to make ammo racking not as common despite every tank having ammo in its turret. APDS has been buffed a lot, and now you can one-shot a T-54 from the front with the L7, and it's awesome. This should make spading the Japanese a whole lot easier for me. More minor details, the Type 87 can now be haul broken, unfortunately. Object 120 is harder to haul break. The Type 60 ATM had one of its many glitches fixed. 
the Leopard A1A1 got an AP FSDS shell, making it now a viable vehicle at its rank, although it still doesn't have a stabilizer. A whole lot of vehicles got their fire rates increased, including the Object 906, which I will argue did not need its fire rate increased. Besides those, there's a lot of other minor changes that I don't have time to go through. I highly suggest you go and look at this page. I'll have a link in the description. Perhaps you'll find something that skipped my mind. Hit me up in the comments if you do. Other notes about the dev server. The new sound effects for tanks are amazing. And they have this weird whoosh sound effect of rounds flying past your tank. Which sounds a little weird, although I've never had a tank round fly past me, so I don't know if it's accurate or not. And unfortunately, for some reason, the new sound effects don't carry over to aircraft. So your planes will have the old 50 caliber sounds, while your tanks will have new 50 caliber sounds. I don't get why they didn't bother to go fix it for aircraft too while they're at it, but whatever. This is only the first dev server, there's a possibility there will be another one. It's also possible that we're going to get this patch real soon. Now let's go back to those vehicles, particularly the late tier ones. The Emron Abrams, the Leopard 2K, the T-64B, and the Challenger. It seems to have boiled down to the T-64B has the best armor and the best ammo. The Abrams did not get its discarded uranium shell. The Challenger, as I predicted, is riddled with weak spots. Its lower plate has only 70 millimeters of rolled homogeneous armor at 30 degrees. I don't play top tiers really ever, so this is from an outside perspective, but it looks to be that top tier is a large mess right now. And I would highly suggest staying very far away from it till at least a lot of things get nerfed or buffed or if things change by the time the patch is dropped. But as it looks now, don't go near there unless you're brave. In terms of boats, the boats listed weren't the only ones dug up out of the files. There was a cargo ship for the US and Germany. There was also hydrofoils, which look really cool. There's the triplets model, but that's been there. Most concerning was the files for the Albatross fast attack craft. Generally, this would just look like any other fast attack craft in the game. Post-war, two auto 76 mm cannons, really deadly, but what's concerning is what else it's armed with. Two port torpedo tubes and four MM-38 Exocet anti-ship missiles. The thing about these missiles, they're fire and forget. Self-guided, subsonic, with an operational range of 70 to 180 kilometers. Now looking at the in-game model, apparently the missiles don't have a damage model yet. But I have to say, I don't like the idea of self-guided anti-ship missiles. There's no game to be played here. Once you spot the enemy, you press the fire missile button. The missile hits them, they die, or you die. That's it. I don't understand Gaijin's thought process because their whole thing was no self guided missiles in the air because that's not fun. But when it comes to ships, apparently it's all about self guided missiles. The other important details about ships is uh, some weapon files have been found for an Italian light cruiser. In the terms of aircraft that were added, I only really care to bring up the AT-177. It had some controversy back when it was first announced on how much bombs it can carry. In the devlog, it stated that its bomb load would be 660 kilograms, which is pretty impressive. Although, Stona at the bottom of the devlog noted that it's possible in the future they will add a larger bomb load because this is not its historical max bomb load but in the past Gaijin has nerfed bomb loads except for when it's for the TU4. That's just about everything. There are a few other things but I don't exactly have time to cover them. They're not as important. If you've enjoyed this video hit the like button if you want to see more. Subscribe. I make these videos every weekend and I make random videos throughout the week. So thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.